Hey, thanks so much for tuning in to Speechy Things. Please be sure to like this video and subscribe if you want to see more. And feel free to come follow me on Instagram. That's where I spend a lot of my time. Let's do this. So today we have Kristen Bowers from Kiwi Speech. Kristen is brilliant and edgy and cool and so many things that I'm not. <laughs> and she just has a really cool point of view on things and a great eye for design, fun fact. But Kristen, do you have anything you want to add about yourself? Just tell us a little about you. <laughs> that intro cracked me up. Um, <laughs> if by edgy you mean I spent my evening arguing with my daughter about putting Christmas lights on the tree, then like, yes, I'm super edgy. Um, <laughs> no, no I, you're so edgy. <laughs> um yeah so well I'm a mom <laughs> and uh, I'm a speech pathologist so I work uh in Pittsburgh and um we actually service some of the non-public schools in the area so some private schools and that kind of thing in my setting which is a I don't know a, a, a different take on things it's interesting and there's lots of um, pros to that in my opinion I really like that um so yeah, I also create materials for Teachers Pay Teachers. Um, well, not for Teachers Pay Teachers, for speech pathologists. And um, they are available on Teachers Pay Teachers. So I specifically love working on articulation with older students. Um, things about data and data collection and growth mindset. That's all kind of the stuff I spend most of my time creating for. So, yeah. You guys, Kristen likes math. And is <laughs> I love math. I'm probably yeah. I'm probably one of the few speech pathologists out there who like out does better on math measures than than language stuff. So hey, if you need some data and number stuff, I'm your girl. <laughs> I I just like black out, and I just anytime there's any kind of math that might be happening, I try to have my husband there so he can. I just I, it's just better if I stay away. Would you? Tell us why Kiwi Speech. I think it's so cool. Yeah. So, well, my parents, I lived in New Zealand as a kid. I have New Zealand citizenship. My parents are New Zealanders. Um, my whole family lived there. Except, like my mom, my dad, my sister all live in Florida now. But um, so, yeah, I'm from New Zealand. And if you don't know, a lot of New Zealanders call themselves Kiwis. It's just kind of a colloquial term. So, I always crack up like the fruit to me is called a kiwi fruit. That's what we would call it. And so like when people call it a kiwi, I just like cringe a little bit. <laughs> you know um, I just realized the irony, you hate birds. I happen to know. I know, that. right? And the and kiwi when I, is a bird, right? Yes, it is. And when I first, when I met the first iteration of my logo, you know, way back when she made and it had a kiwi bird on it. And I like, I just was just like, <laughs> <laughs> if you yeah, if you see some of my old resources, they may still have it on there. But there's like this bird, and I'm just, you know they don't fly though. And um, is that what it is? is? The flying? Yes. I mean, I, it's not totally what it is. It's also those like creepy talons. But um, yeah, the flying is a is a an is an issue for me. <laughs> so you know what? Like, like penguins do not freak me out nearly as much as literally like a hummingbird <laughs> <laughs> that cracks me up that yeah. I had never made that connection that yeah. kiwi is a bird and you hate birds but you're kiwi speech and that's mm -hmm. right. yeah, yeah. Um, I feel the same way about sloths about what sloths I don't like sloths they're creepy oh sloths I thought you yeah I didn't know what I thought you said that wasn't that anyway things you didn't want to know today yeah. <laughs> well, so we are going to be talking about productivity hacks and I think you and I kind of, I know we've talked about this before and I want to just like open with this. We'll touch on it again. We're going to close with it because I want no matter who is, you know, if you're doing the dishes and someone calls your name and you miss this, like, this is the part I don't want anyone to miss of this podcast or video or whatever you're watching this on. We're not talking about how to do more. Mm -hmm. We're talking about how to do it more efficiently. Absolutely. Yes. Do you want to elaborate on that or should we jump in? Yeah, no, I mean, that's, that's exactly it. I mean, I, I don't know. I just have days where I leave work and I was, I was like busy all day, but I just leave work feeling frustrated because I, I know I like didn't 
I felt busy all day, but I also know I didn't accomplish a single thing on my to-do list. And then I have other days where I was busy all day and I know I just like, boom, 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 like got it done. And I, I just, I leave work feeling a little bit more fired up, much more fulfilled. And and I leave work at both days and I'm pretty good at not taking work home with me. So yeah, this isn't a lesson on like how to motivate yourself to get a million things done after hours. Like that's absolutely not it. It's the opposite. It's just, you know, being efficient and making better use of your time. Um, like you can get, you can, yeah. And I think to me, it comes down to fulfillment. When I have a busy day, I'm okay with that. That's me as a personality. But if I check things off my to-do list, like I feel fulfilled, I feel happy. But when I have a busy day and I look around, whether it's at home or it's at school, and I'm just like, what did I do with my time all day? Like, I just find that really frustrating. And yeah, it's, it's to me, it's, you know, I mean, I, I know it's cliche, work smarter, not harder. Yeah. But it's what I hope we're all aspiring to do, you know? Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So I, you read a lot of books. <laughs> like a lot of books and, and, and I, I have benefited from just conversations we've had. <laughs> learned, I'm so glad you know, I can like put in the time for you. <laughs> yeah. So I'm working smarter, not harder. I like, <laughs> you totally are. and I'm working smarter, not harder because most of them are on audiobook while I'm driving. You know, I am not sitting there like, you know, I do, I do that too, but that's okay. how I get through them. I feel a little less guilty of taking it. Totally. Of that's good. Um, but so is there a particular book that you want to talk about today that you feel like really applies to SLPs and maybe had the biggest impact and what were your takeaways? And Yeah. So I don't know if I would go so far as to say this really applies to SLPs in that I would say, you know, you're an SLP run out and read this book. Um, so let me start. The name of the book is, is when, and it's by Daniel Pink. So it's called when, and I wrote this down because, um, but it's, the Scientific Secrets of Perfect Timing. So it's largely like a business book, um, but it's also just about the way we as people function. And it talks a lot about how we focus a lot on the who, you know, business or, or anyone who's doing this, who's doing that, or on the what, what are they doing? We don't talk as much about when, but, you know, he kind of argues why that is such an important thing. And again, I'm not going to say like every SLP needs to run out and read this book, but there are, to me, it's just one of those things that there were so many really good takeaways that apply to how I structure my, my day. And I think, you know, we all, you know, we have back to back kids all day. We have IEPs. Um, and I think it's like, especially lately, you know, things, things change over time. And, you know, as things get added to our plate, we have to adjust how we run our schedule. And I, I there's just so many takeaways from that book. Um, so do you, want, do you want me to just like jump into it or? Give me, give me your top, top couple of takeaways. Yeah, honestly, I have, I have one. And, okay, you know, he talks about how we, we go through a cycle through a day. So the large majority of people go through sort of the same cycle where we're at our peak in the morning. And then we kind of have this lull around, and especially after kind of lunch time. And I don't think that this is like mind blowing to everybody, right? Anyone, <laughs> anyone who's ever had lunch <laughs> knows about the after lunch, like funk, right? Like those, two, you know, and um, I know, especially for me, if I have a prep and a lunch right next to each other, that first brew afterwards is like just, you know, it's just a little bit harder to get me going. And then, you know, we kind of have that in the early afternoon and then we do hit this peak later in the day. What? Sorry. I was just thinking about how after lunch sessions, I usually yawn and just thinking about it made me yawn. So I apologize. <laughs> I'm listening. So, um, I wonder how many people listening to this just yawn. Are yawning. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> No, you're good. Okay, continue. So, yeah, so you know, we we most of us, a large majority of the population, um, research shows we go through the similar cycle. And but what was really important to me is that we do different types of work better at different times of day. So for most of us, our brain is most switched on in the morning, and that is an optimal time for us to do like really deep, analytical, difficult work. Um, I've heard you talk about it before and a lot of people talk about like eat the frog, right? Like whatever. But I got that from you. 
<laughs> really? I'm almost positive. I got that from you. No, I mean, I think you did. I think I've mentioned it before. Yeah. But, Changed know, my life. I love it. Okay. So now I feel like I'm going on a tangent, but you know, eat the frog is the one thing that hangs over your head. You don't want to do, do it first thing in the day and it won't hang yeah. over you all day. But so the, so often, the saying is from who said it? I, no, no, no. It's like, I like an old timey cowboy kind of guy. Chris, Chris somebody said this. <laughs> <laughs> basically if your job is to eat a frog eat it first thing in the morning if you have mm-hmm. to eat two frogs eat the biggest one first so whatever your big thing hanging over your head that you have to tackle what just just do it just tackle that first everything else comes so much easier totally Change so so this like fits into that but but often that thing is a hard thing and it turns out that our brain is just so much better able to do that in the morning it's mm-hmm. And you, you may kind of go like, oh, okay, yeah. Like, and I know for me, there are certain things I'm better at the morning. In the afternoon, we can still be really productive. However, there are certain things that kind of fit into the way our brain works in the afternoon. So those are maybe more creative um, things, more loose things, right? Not analytical data crunching or writing IEPs on a kid you've been evaluating, you have multiple standardized assessments, you need to pull it all together, right? Like that's hard, deep work. So that lends itself better to the way our brain functions in the morning. Whereas in the afternoon, something like lesson planning, which is a little bit more open, a little bit more creative, might be a better fit for you. And how this has changed things for me is I used to feel like productivity meant like focus on a single thing throughout the day. And so, for example, I had this IEP and if I didn't have time in the morning to do it, I would sort of like fight myself all afternoon if I had this break to get it done. And I ended up procrastinating. I ended up letting myself get distracted. Whereas I'd be better doing that IEP like over two morning sessions and then lesson planning over two afternoon sessions than IEPing all one day and lesson planning all one day. Now, of course, no one like in the SLP school, SLP world, I know is doing anything for all one day. but just kind of, uh, once I started getting aware that I'm better at certain things at certain times of day, I stopped fighting myself on it. And then I became like twice as productive at both of those things, if that makes sense. So don't waste your peak hours doing st- not stupid stuff, but doing, <laughs> you know, doing, doing your stupid job, <laughs> doing your stupid <laughs> and learning. No, don't waste your peak hours doing easier you know, don't waste that time cutting and laminating your materials for the next day. That is a huge waste of like your optimal brain hours. When is the best time to cut and laminate, you think? <laughs> I would, well, in front of the TV. And the, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, I mean, I truly am really, I'm pretty good at not taking stuff home. Um, although I think, I don't know, maybe I'm weird. I think most people are kind of agree. There's something about that. Like there's no time pressure. It's just so monotonous that I actually wouldn't mind doing it at home in the evenings. But that also means you have to take all your stuff home and, you know. I think we should clarify. It's not cutting and laminating. It's laminating and then cutting. (laughs) That's true. We're going to be working smarter, not harder. (laughs) And do you think it would be better? Like, is that something, if you really have something you really do need to get done, like laminate it and then cut that day, doing that after lunch? (laughs) Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Lesson planning. um, You know, if you have to create a resource for someone the next day, you know, we've all got, oh, I I absolutely got this like (laughs) kid that's doing some funky thing that you can't find anything for and you've got to make it. Um, Yeah. Those are the types of things that would be much better for your, for your afternoon lesson planning time. If you have one thing in the morning, get that hard stuff out of the way. It's not just the eat the frog thing. It's, it's, such a you're, good you're so much better. Your brain is so much more. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And for the record, this applies to a very, very large majority of the population. But he said there are some that are true early birds that function on a slightly different schedule. But he's, he, you know, he sort of says a lot of people who call themselves early birds still don't actually function on this kind of other schedule. So I would hedge to bet like a large, large majority of us are functioning on this kind of peak in the morning, second wind in the evening, hard lull <laughs> after <one. laughs> Done. Done. <laughs> Done. So there's, act- well, two things. First of all, it was Mark Twain, I believe. So I don't know that I was accurate. 
but Google just told me it was Mark Twain that said the eat the frog thing. There's I, a, I think that does sound right now that you yeah. say it. No, I don't know that old timey Western. I'm honestly, I'm not even going to go there because I'll just make a fool of myself. Maybe that describes him. Maybe not. I'm not totally sure. So author, right? <laughs> going to go with a hard no on that. One. Okay, yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> Whatever. Like I said, I'm very unlike Kristen. I'm not <laughs> nearly as cultured, <laughs> but I think the so, word you're looking for is like nerdy. <laughs> I'm nerdy with pop culture. <laughs> <laughs> so another a book that this makes me think of actually and I I want to say it's called The Power of When. Have you heard of that? No. Like I feel okay. like I want to google this right now. Go for it. Start googling. Um but it talks about diff- chronotypes, different chronotypes. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm looking at it now. I haven't read it, but I've seen it before. So I'm a bear. <laughs> there's also like dolphin and wolf and like, so, it, but it, it, there's like a free quiz you can take online and it tells you your chronotype. So it sounds like that would fit in really well with what you're talking about. So if anyone wants to look up either of these books. Yeah. Like Daniel Pink, who's the author of the one I'm talking about, he, he separates, um, Mm, I forgot. There's like the main one. I, I can't think of the name. It's like, and then there there are night owls, and then there's like the larks, which are early, early morning. And you know, whoever's just norm, the normal schedule, and the night owls, they tend to function kind of on the same cycle. Although the night owls may be a little, a little shifted, if that makes sense. Like their peak may be a little later. Um, but again, he said it's a lot larger of of the well, it's a lot larger percentage of the population than you might think that right. that can. Kind of that's so, I mean, I guess if you're listening to this and thinking like, oh my God, that's not at all like what I experienced, then that's fair, but. Yeah, but you're probably wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> I, you know, I used to think I was a night owl, but then I realized like, I'm just avoiding bed. I'm not getting anything done. I just right. like don't want to get off the couch and actually brush my teeth. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Yeah, and that's, and that's the difference, right? Like, only true night owls have their absolute peak and best work of the day at like 11 and midnight. Right. And again, like just because you stay up late <laughs> doesn't mean you're a night owl. Right. It means you just need to and like there. go to bed. Just go to bed. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I've, I've stopped trying to work till 2 a.m. Most of, you know, I used to do that a lot more. Probably for the best. <laughs> Definitely for the best. So all right. Don't let me move you on. If you had anything else you wanted to add. No, I know, I'm not okay. I know there's like tools and apps and thing, or at least one that I've heard you talk about before. Yeah. Well, I love the forest app. It's called forest. Um, and if you've ever heard of the Pomodoro technique, which is kind of like 20 minutes of work, five minutes off, 20 minutes of work. So it's, you know, if you have a massive, if you have the praxis to study for, or, you know, whatever, if you have a big chunk of work that has to get done, um, you know, they suggest, yeah, you do 20 minutes of completely focused work hmm. and then you kind of give yourself a five minute break. And for me, how that works is I make sure I keep a notepad next to me because otherwise I let these little thoughts creep in and I'm afraid I'm going to forget them. So if I can just write them down, then I don't feel bad pushing them off. But again, as a side at night too. Yeah, totally. Yeah. You just, like, to me, it's like, it's the fear of forgetting about it that stresses me out more than the fact that I won't get it done. But I mean, if you're a school SLP, it's not like you're getting these two hour blocks of time during the day to just like work on this stuff. So the forest app to me is kind of a take on that where you can pick your time. So sometimes it's 15 minutes for me. Um, I have coaching sessions set aside for my parents um, that they can sign up for to, to meet with me, but they're not always full. So that's often like a 15 minute block of time that I can get done. So yeah, I mean, 20 minutes explicitly doesn't always work, but the forest timer, you can just set it and then you like you plant trees and it's sim- super simple in the way that the, the app itself isn't a distraction, but, um, it's okay. like, if you plant enough trees, they'll plant a real tree for you. And you kind of, if you use your phone while you're in your timer, you, you kill your tree and it's traumatic. Oh no, we love trees. Okay. So the forest <laughs> app is a timer. Yes. And it kind of, but it kind of like locks your phone down. Yeah. Like if you touch your phone while this timer is on, it's like, get back to work. <laughs> it's like step. Kill a tree. Gotcha. Okay. That yeah. sounds, yeah. I, I know I've used that trick before to like, um, not, I haven't used the forest app, but okay. I'm going to spend 
10 minutes working on this report. Yeah. 10 minutes. That's all I have to do. And usually I find I'm like in a groove and I want to keep going. Absolutely. But you also have to recognize, and I've tried to get better at this. Like once I realize I'm not being productive anymore, that's when I need to stop, step away, do something else. Yes. Right. But, and it's hard to catch myself because, it, you know, I go down a rabbit hole and then I get on Instagram oh. probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> then, yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. I'm all this time. And next thing I know, it's been an hour and I'm like, well, oops. Yeah. No, I, I mean, I totally agree. So yeah, that timer has, has worked for me. Awesome. It keeps the distractions to a minimum. Um, that, and then the, like my last little productivity hack is assigning your to-do list to specific times. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think most school SLPs have these small blocks of time throughout the day. Like none of us are sitting here again, staring at these big blocks of time that it's like, Oh, I can't wait to like go through my to-do list. Mm -hmm. But I don't know about you, but I am just one of those people who gets killed with this analysis paralysis. So I get into work. If I get in early, it's 7 30 or something. So I have say 15 minutes before I need to figure out, you know, go get my group or whatever. And I'm like, okay, here's my to-do list. What can I do? Oh, I need to call the doctor. Oh wait, well, I can't call them. They're not open. Okay. I need to, oh wait, I don't have that. That's at home. And then before I know it, my 15 minutes is gone because I've, I've spent all my time trying to decide what to do. <laughs> so, and I, I don't know if it was from that same book or I've heard about it a lot. It comes from the business world where they talk about um, like management schedules are very different than uh, like creative people's schedules. So in management and in like the corporate world, things are scheduled around meetings, mm-hmm. whereas creative people try to like put big blocks of time. So it kind of comes from that. But the idea is that, you know, I have a half hour lunch break. And if I have phone calls to make, like scheduling an appointment for the pediatrician or whatever, I make sure that calling the pediatrician is not on an arbitrary to-do list. It is scheduled at 12 o'clock because I know that at 12 o'clock, the doctor's office is open and I have a lunch break. So it's it's written in a time slot. It's not just written at the bottom of 10 tasks. And every, the morning when I go through and I see, okay, you know, I don't have a parent schedule during that class or, oh, this class is on a field trip. You know, I have a 30 minute period. I take things that are on that list and I assign them based on, you know, just the constraints of, of life, what's open, what's, um, you know, what teacher, if it's a meeting with a teacher, you know, those things, emailing a parent, like that is, I have a time block that might say email all these parents. I know. That was funny. So if you're listening on podcast, she put quotes, air quotes around emailing a parent. And I'm like, interesting. interesting. <laughs> yeah, that's so hypothetical. I, think I was like quoting my own text because <laughs> okay. it was like theoretically written. <laughs> because we all email parents, right? <laughs> I'm kidding. I hope we all email parents. It's very important. <laughs> Sorry. So, yeah. I mean, that's that. Give, give your to-do list specific <laughs> times you're going to get them done and, yeah. and use air quotes when appropriate. When appropriate. Yes. So <laughs> I, I love that. That's a good point. And that's something that I, I, I have trouble doing, but it makes so much sense to just go ahead and say like, okay, this like, and then you know, it's coming. Mm-hmm. You can mentally prepare at two o'clock. This is what I'm doing. You know, and it also really cuts down on distractions and it cuts down on, you know, we tend to always do the most recently occurring task. Mm-hmm. So if I have a million things to do and someone stops me in the hallway and is like, could you please look into X, Y, Z? Like, what do you think I'm going to do when I get back to my office? It's going to sp- be spent half an hour looking into this thing that literally ju- just popped up. Whereas I probably should have crossed those other six things off my to-do list that have been sitting there since Monday. Yeah. And it, I think having those things done and down in a time slot really helps you move forward, cross things off and, and not get as distracted. I like that. So to recap, we're trying the forest app because you're going to be able to plant trees. It's going to shut down your phone and it has a nice little timer. <laughs> you're just going to get in there. Say what? It's gonna save the world. It's gonna save the world. We're <laughs> saving the world. That's what this podcast is all about. Saving the world. <laughs> and then, all right. So you're scheduling your to-do list, but in time slots, mm-hmm. putting it yeah. actually in a spot instead of just like at the end. Yeah, like don't have your schedule over here list. on one side, and then your to-do list over here on the right. Put your to-do list into your schedule. Okay. I like that. And when you're doing that, you're keeping in mind morning 
probably is better for analytical tasks or as Mark Twain, <laughs> the non-Western man said, <laughs> I think Twain makes me think of twang. I really think that's probably what it is. Anyway, in the morning, you're getting analytical and you're doing the hard things. Right after lunch, you're going to be tired. So maybe that's the time that you laminate and then cut. I repeat, laminate, then cut. Don't cut, laminate, cut. That's wasting your time. Laminate and cut. Laminate, cut. And then in the afternoon, get creative. Yeah, absolutely. Lesson plans, create resources. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Email teachers. (laughs) Air quotes. Email teachers, air quotes, submit report. <laughs> but really do those things. They're very <laughs> <laughs> We want everyone employed. <laughs> All right. Do you have any parting thoughts, Kristen? <laughs> I don't, but I did just Google eat that frog and it's a book also by Brian Tracy. So I felt like that should um, also get a little bit of a shout shout out on here. Eat that frog, 21 great ways to stop procrastinating and get more done in less time. I haven't read it, but it feels like if you made it to the end of this podcast, it may be a book that's interesting to you. And if you made it to the end, bless your heart. Thank you so much for sticking with us. So... (laughs) I, I'm going to throw this in there too, just because we're talking about productivity and procrastination just came up. So many of us SLPs are very type A and we're perfectionists and something else that totally changed my life. And I've talked about this on Instagram before perfectionists are the worst procrastinators. And Kristen and I have had conversations about this recently because we often don't want to start something until we think we can do it all the way and do it perfectly. When in reality, it's much better just to like Take a bite out of it. it Just is. get it started. Whatever it is it in is. your life. Yeah, there's like that, that uh, perfectionism is the enemy of progress. And it's so true. Yes. Um, it's so true. You know, going back, you just mentioned getting things started. One more last like little trick. The best thing I can do to get myself started the next day is you have to leave something unfinished at the end of the day. So if I have a report, yeah, I know it's hard, but that here's the cringe. thing. <laughs> I know it makes me cringe too. And it's very anti-perfectionism. I agree. But here's the thing. If you've got an IEP report and you leave in the middle of it and it is up on your screen, when you get up the next morning, you just like, it's there, it's started and it doesn't feel so daunting. Okay. And then you or, just like, you know what you're doing. You know the plan. You know what you're doing. Go. Right. And you don't have that analysis paralysis. Like you, yeah. you just get right back to work or at minimum, you know, I'll leave a post-it note on my desk that has like the number one first task to start on. Mm. And so I don't sit there being like, what should I do first? Okay. Of all my million school SLP things. You just gave me hives, but I understand. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> you know, I got that from a, um, um, Elizabeth Gilbert, I think, you know, who wrote Eat, Pray, Love. She has a book about sort of creativity and um, creating things. And I think that that was something she sort of mentioned in there is a lot of writers do that. They sort of mm-hmm. they end their day mid, mid chapter or mid paragraph because then they don't have that writer's block getting started the next day. That's interesting. Just got to get the ball rolling. Cool. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining. You're welcome. I feel like I had one more thing I wanted to say, but now I don't remember. I've been doing that a lot today. Mm. <laughs> I <don't know>. yeah, <laughs> nothing, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No, we're good. Okay. Thank you so much, Kristen, for your time. I really You're appreciate welcome. you joining us. And just, you know, I always enjoy talking to you and you do. And I just have to add though, we said we were going to circle back to not. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. I just forgot, but that's what it was. We're circling back because you want to send us off with that important thought. No, I just, yeah. I mean, the goal is not to use these tricks to add more stuff to your plate. It's to use these tricks to, to, to get that stuff done. Get it off your plate. Get it off your plate and and move on with your day. And again, I mean, I can have a busy day and feel great at the end of the day, but I can have a busy day and feel absolutely awful because I know that my time wasn't well spent. And I don't know if that's just, again, the type A, like, but a a good, busy, efficient day feels good. 
I think so too. And mm, you know, those, <laughs> those busy, and I'm using air quotes appropriately here, like that, those busy days where you get to the end of the day and you're like, what did I even do? Those, those don't feel good. No. So, yeah. It's not to do more. It's, it's just exhausting. To, get it done quicker, get it done more efficiently and with a little more focus maybe. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I love that. You know, work smarter, not harder as cliche as that is, but truly, mm-hmm. I mean, SLPs have so much on their plates. And so many distractions. I think that's the hardest part, right? Like it's not just get through these reports. Oh gosh, I have so many reports start at one, then two, then three. It's, it's not like that. It's not linear. It's all over the place. Yeah. And we have to learn how to juggle it all. That's mm-hmm. such a good point. So again, we're not trying to help you squeeze more into your day necessarily by any means or make you feel more overwhelmed. You have to do more, more, more. That is not the case. We want it to be, to feel more manageable. Yeah, totally. I love it. Well, thank you again. I think you're helping me remember what I wanted to say. You're welcome. I was like, (laughs) we're supposed to circle back. (laughs) Yes, we were. We were. Absolutely. Well, you have a wonderful evening, Kristen. I appreciate your time. And again, you can find Kristen at Kiwi Speech on TPT, on Instagram, Facebook, kiwispeech.com, yeah. all over the place. Yeah. And it's the 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 nationality, not the no. bird. <laughs> yes, yes, I am a kiwi. It is not the bird, <laughs> first and foremost. And also it's called a kiwi fruit. Import oh yes, of course. Yeah. Kiwi fruit. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Have a great night, Kristen. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.